Hellenistic period occurred from 323 to 31 BCE and is characterized by a rise in Greek culture from the Western Mediterranean to India. After the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BCE, his realm was split into three regions, the Antigonid Kingdom, the Seleucids Empire, and the Ptolemaic Kingdom. These empires characterized the Hellenistic period. Rulers of these realms chose to invest money into artworks and architecture to beautify their cities. The states had a cosmopolitan culture, incorporating Egyptian, Persian, and Indian influences to define what is known as Greek or Hellenic culture. Although the dynasties that made up the Hellenistic period were not politically united, a common language called Koine united people of all regions. In addition to being connected by a shared language, trade between regions significantly increased. The Hellenistic period was also defined by a rise in mathematics and science. Before the Hellenistic period, there were the Archaic and Classical periods. These two periods had art that caused the Hellenistic art to be exactly what it was. Art from the Archaic period was described as emotionalist and rigid, and art from the Classical period was much more realistic in comparison. The differences between the Classical and Hellenistic periods is mainly how natural the sculpture poses are and how they are able to display emotion. During the Hellenistic period, sculptures began to explore the studies of eroticism of female nudity openly. They were using Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, love, and marriage, as an example slowly objectifying the goddess for sexual desire. Because of Aphrodite's title, sculptors wanted to create the essence that still gives the goddess the portrayal of temptation, hence why she's covering her genital area and clutching onto drapery in an attempt to cover her body. Sculptors would exaggerate certain poses or actions like resting. As shown in this photo of Barberini Fawn, where after a night of wine drinking, his body is slightly arched, head tilted, resting onto his shoulder, his right arm extended over the side of his head, and his right leg is bent, but both legs are widely spread out, accentuating his lower region. The Hellenistic period perfected naturalism, and this was achieved through three main characteristics. The first is expressive movement, which is where the sculptures are positioned in ways where they look like they are moving. The second characteristic is realistic anatomy, in which the human body is not put in an ideal way. So instead of having perfect posture, they would have poor posture. Ornate details are the final main component of these sculptures. This one is very well known and is talked about a lot, for these details are what make skin and fabric look soft. The changes in the Hellenistic era in society led to a change in the status of women, and this was reflected in the sculpture of the time. There was the portrayal of feminine beauty in the humanization of goddesses. However, the rugged real nature of aging seemed to be the only state that mortal women were depicted in. There was a fascination during this time with the accurate representation of old age. This first image is a marble statue of an old woman from 14 to 68 AD. Uh, you can kind of see in the, in the marble, you can see the ruggedness of her face, and it could be that this is a mortal woman. Uh, she doesn't have any name, uh, uh, any goddess names or anything. And the second image is a statue of a drunken old woman from 100 to 200 AD. Again, you can kind of see the, the, elder, like the oldness in her face. You can see these wrinkles in the marble. And it's kind of showing a bit more of a, a mortal side for, for women, the fact that aging leads to death. Representation of masculinity. Male bodies were traditionally depicted nude to represent the strength and beauty of the status of men that was already held in society, which is a little more clear-cut and widely understood than the depiction of a nude female. This particular work from early 1st century BCE depicts the nude male figure in a dynamic pose where the artist appears to have emphasized the musculature of the main figure. This work, Barberini Fawn from 230-200 BCE, depicts the masculine ideal of strength, bravery, and heroism. The representation of these nude women, linked in a dance-like pose, represent the three graces, beauty, mirth, and abundance. They bestow what is most pleasurable in nature and society, fertility, and growth, beauty in the arts, and harmonious reciprocity between men. They were said to serve as handmaids for the goddess Aphrodite, these women could be suggested to represent femininity in society, as women may have been expected to embody these three graces. Praxiteles was a notable sculptor whose works humanized the Greek gods and goddesses in the late classical period, unpredescently sculpting the goddess of love in nude in the Aphrodite of Nidos. Other sculptures begun following Praxiteles' lead in undressing Aphrodite in the Hellenistic period, while also exploring eroticism in the new female form. Praxiteles created a new curve called the Praxitelian curve. This curve further influenced many Hellenistic sculpture as it was implemented in the Aphrodite of Milos in the Hellenistic period. Why Hellenistic sculptures are difficult to find today? During the Hellenistic era, bronze sculptures were ubiquitous. Bronze has the capabilities to stand alone, allowing the sculptors to further manipulate the metal to detail human expression, using a technique called lost wax casting. This technique allowed sculptors to create in multiples, which during the Hellenistic period resulted in bronze sculptures being very common. 
Due to oxidation, ancient bronze sculptures now take the form of different shades of colors of green or gray. There are certain areas where you can still find remnants of bronze, which is slightly visible of the sculpture of the sleeping arrows underneath his arm as well underneath his thigh. How Hellenistic Sculpture Later Influenced Baroque Sculpture in Europe Hellenistic sculptures are more closely related to Baroque works as they finally sought to capture the dynamic human spirit, movement, and emotion in highly detailed sculptures, which, like the Hellenistic, were further distinguished by the increased technical skill of the sculptors in suggesting light, shadow, and weight of the marble. This work is an Aphrodite and Eros sculpture by an unknown artist from 100 BC to 0 AD. As you can see, the sculptures still idealize beauty, but it is displayed dynamically through the weight and transparency of the marble. You can see the, the drapery coming over her leg and over her body. You can almost see through it to the, the skin of the figure. This work is titled Winged Victory, the Nike of Samothrace, 200 to 190 BCE. Another example of the transparency and weight of the marble around the figure's legs and stomach. The comparison of Hellenistic sculpture to later Baroque art shows that the history of art can be a cynical process, but continues to have a lasting impact on the audiences they captivate. Note the similarities to the Hellenistic sculpture in the previous section, and the weight of the fabric over their legs. Inspired by Hellenistic work, the dynamism in their pose tells a story in Baroque work as well. This is an example of a Baroque work that you can use to compare to the Hellenistic sculptures in the previous section. This one's called Pan Comforting Psyche by Reynold Begas, 1857 to 1858. You can see the Hellenistic influence of the weight of the fabric over her legs.